thing that I notice the most often is the, uh, you know, getting through that. I mean, we have a very long, especially in group, it is a very long sales, sales cycle. cycle. Yeah. I mean, before that first commission check comes in, uh, you need to know what you're getting into, but then you got to be patient and you got to put in the effort. You are listening to the 8% Nation podcast, created to help you become a top producer in the insurance industry. Enjoy the show. Welcome to this week's 8% Nation podcast. We have a special guest in the group health benefits space, James Nevins with Nafont Benefits Advisors. Benefit Advisors. Thank you for joining us, my friend. Thank you. I appreciate you joining us, man. We have not done a lot of content with group health professionals. You are a friend of mine, local to Springfield. Yep. We've known each other for, geez, seven or... When, when, when did we start networking together? Boy, that would, uh, that would actually be pretty early whenever I started in. So it'd be seven, eight years. Seven, eight years. Wow. And you've, you've been in group health that whole, whole time, right? Yeah. Basically. Right. And then you recently went on your own. When did that happen? So that would have been uh, August of last year. So August of 2018. We just uh, crossed over a, a year and a few months. Well, I think this is an interesting story because I don't hear a lot of young guys like yourself getting into the group health benefits side. Why do you think that there's not a, I mean, when you go to these conventions, you're probably the youngest guy by 10 years on average. I mean, is that, yeah, how, how old are you? So I am currently 30. Very proud of it. Uh, Boom. As, as, a, as a matter of fact, I have been trying to tell people I'm older than I am, trying to say, well, I'm, I'm working on 30 for a really long time. Yeah. As soon as you hit 30, you're, the now, 20s, baby. You know, you're, yeah. you're now a, you're now legitimate. You so know? you were selling group health benefits at 22. Yes. Uh, uh, 22, 23. Um, is whenever I really started getting into the uh, the group uh, benefits, and I will say that uh, while I thought I knew everything at that point, um, I now look back and it's like my poor self, you know. Uh, yeah. Right. It's funny. Yeah, well, and it's it's one of those things, you know, uh, I remember my very first client uh, that I ever wrote, um, I had everything pulled up on a screen, and I uh, there was kind of a quoting system that we used uh, back then. It was uh, 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 with a, an insurance company that's not even around anymore, and I was talking to them about the plan. I was just reading, you know, line yeah. by line <laughs> what it said, and, you know, I, okay, I'm licensed, which doesn't mean you know anything, but <laughs> I'm reading line by line, and they're like, so, so what's the deductible? And I uh, hovered the mouse over the word deductible trying to stall and a little definition popped up. And I basically regurgitated the definition in a slightly different words. And the guy's like, oh, okay. okay. All right. All nice. right. All right. <laughs> All right. That's uh, okay. Well, thank you for answering that. That's it's awesome, like, yeah. man. So uh, anyway, but that was, uh, yeah, uh, really, really good times. Well, definitely. you've made the, the entrepreneurial jump sooner than most to do your own thing, build your own business. Um, from my understanding... Uh, you started, like I said, less than a year ago. You're already six million in premium on Group Health. Um, this is your own company about that. Time, yeah. Right. Yeah. Good, yeah. Good, good. So 253 percent growth just from the beginning of this year till now, um, dude. What do you? First off, I want to unpack that a little bit. Okay. First off, why did you choose to go independent um, in general? Help me understand that journey, the entrepreneurial sort of risk that you took. Walk me through your mindset because there's a lot of guys that watch and gals that watch this that are sort of captive that are debating going independent or working for someone debating to do their own thing. And I, I know they are all hungry to hear that story of what clicked with you mentally. Just walk me through how that sort of happened for you, if that's okay. Yeah. So um, as far as what actually got me to make the jump, if I could take just a step back uh, previous and say that, you know, whenever I got started, um, I was actually working for my uh, father-in-law, who uh, was, a, was a partner at a very, very successful agency. Um, here locally, nice. and um, he uh, uh, had kind of made it known that, hey, you're going to potentially inherit this or take over this whenever I leave. Uh, as, you know, I kept growing and I was uh, pretty ambitious and aggressive, um, he was a little bit more conservative. The uh, uh, advances and the amount of time, uh, the timetable uh, of me being able to take over was a little different than what he had uh, originally um, said that it would be. So I basically made that uh, jump um, looking and saying, hey, I'm young now. I can take on a risk right on, man. in, you know, my late 20s, almost 30. 
uh, and I want to do this before you know I'm 40, yeah, and then yeah, I'm yeah. I'm stuck and I can't right do anything. On. So that's a that's exactly what happened. Is I you know hey I'm young, I you know I've got three kids, a three, two, and one year old at the time, and I was like you know I haven't done anything risky in a while. Yeah, nice. this is it. This is it. This is what it will do. Uh, and so you know uh, we actually. Uh, uh, my wife, uh, extremely supportive. Um, I've got to say, if there was one thing that I can contribute to me being able to make that jump, it was my wife. We all um, work with our wives. That's awesome. Yeah. So, he, so his wife's yeah. in the in-house, so is mine. And, yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, Kimberly uh, became the breadwinner, um, and she's actually in the industry. Yeah. Depending on the topic, um, she knows a lot more than I do, so, you know, I have to be careful taking her out in public. Uh, <laughs> but she... Uh, she, uh, 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 you know, was uh, extremely supportive. Was the breadwinner, got me on my feet and going, um, and that's you know, and you know, here we are. Good so. for you, man. Where, where did that, uh, where did that come from for you to want to like take that risk, do your own thing? Um, and maybe it's just an aggressive personality. Like everybody's got disc assessments personality. So there's something in your childhood or growing up where you were always just entrepreneurial, or you know. Yeah. So uh, I have, um, I actually sold Timeshare whenever I was 17. Um, I got an interview. I didn't know what it was for. I just, yeah. uh, I was working at Target and I was like, I can make more than this. No why doubt. am I, you know, why can't I go do something I else? Call I call day. That's yeah. easy. Well, I'm going to go do a, a sales job and there was something at some resort and it's some sales and you can make, you know, a hundred, uh, you know, I think it was a hundred and make $150,000, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, well, I can do that. And so I go in and I actually got the job. And then whenever I was filling out the paperwork, they asked me how old I was, and I was like, um, I'm 17. And they were like, you can't sign contracts at 17. So <laughs> I actually would pitch, and I'd always have to have a closer come over and do all the contracting. Uh, but it was uh, that, I guess my, my point with that is I uh, was doing, uh, that's, Whenever I was, I was in high school, I had uh, jobs that were other people's full-time professions. Mm -hmm. So it was just kind of normal. Um, I uh, also was a, a veteran. I got deployed. It was very hard going wow. from a owning your own life to, you know, this is how you'll brush your teeth. Uh, yeah. This is what you'll eat and what you'll wear and stuff like that. Um, what, and it, what branch of the military? Army. Thank you for your service. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. I didn't actually know That's that. Cool. Oh yeah, yeah, 2009. That's uh, awesome. uh, spent it over in uh, overseas, which I will tell you, 2009. You had like the uh, Haiti quake. Uh, Red Box came out, and this little thing um, called uh, uh, the Affordable Care Act gotcha. uh, ah, all gotcha. happened. All happened during that, and it was. Uh, I remember going to you know McDonald's, and I was like, "Hey, they're selling toys outside. What's that red?" kiosk thing you could you, you have to buy toys they don't have them in the happy meals anymore <laughs> it was like no these are movies they have movies in the happy meals and it was like no this is this is red box chill out uh but anyway so um so yeah so uh i did some of that so whenever i came back um i i don't know i have always wanted to own my own business uh i've never been one that wanted to work for somebody which there's yeah. nothing wrong with working for somebody sure. it's just you know that was uh, what i was after some people aren't meant to do that you know yeah I mean, some people you don't yeah. want to have their own thing yeah, yeah. Right. and that was uh, so that, that was the my goal has always been to uh own my own business and uh that actually got really cemented for me it was about four years ago i had a uh i had a client that was retiring um closing down shop they had um three, four employees, and, and the employees didn't make bad money, but this was a very small uh, shop. They sold kind of like tractor uh, equipment, um, and their retirement strategy was to sell all of the stuff back mm. to the uh, manufacturer. So they had kind of a contract that allowed them to sell it back to the manufacturer, and so we were talking. Here they are in their 60s with this little bitty business, and it was, um, I think it was like $12 million. Of the inventory they sold back? of And that's, you know, money pocket. And something about the way the taxes wow. work, they didn't have to, you know, I, I don't know all the details on that, but that was a, it was like, holy cow, that is uh, incredible. And so I started looking, I was like, you know what, it you want to be your own boss, that's the biggest success you can have, and it doesn't matter what you do, whether you sell insurance or tractor mm -hmm. parts or scrub potties, owning your own business, that's, that's where you, that's, you know, that's where the money's at, so. Yeah. R random question, because because it is the American dream, right? But do you think everyone should own their own business, or do you think some people just aren't cut out for it? 
Uh, okay, so that's really tough. Uh, so I've got it a lot is. of opinions. So I, I think that everyone could. Yeah, yeah. But I don't think everybody's cut out for it. Yeah. So I guess to, to answer that, and it's and you know there's a lot of people that that just isn't because uh, it takes a lot of risk. Um, it cost just putting a putting a dollar amount on it. Um, it cost me seventy five thousand to get my um, insurance uh, practice up and going. Yeah. And now mind you, we went really fast um, and you know made uh, covered a lot of ground and got uh, and you know a year later we're um, kind of out out from under all of that, but. Um, I, the stress, oh, the, dude. the oh, fear. Dude. Uh, I mean, it's real. I mean, yes, you know, yes. uh, I remember Christmas of last year was, I mean, it was terrifying. Yeah. Like, you know, uh, hey, we need to call everybody and do white elephant gifts and we're going to do rocks. Um, Cause you know, I can find rocks. I can make that and put it in a box. <laughs> uh, but you know, that was a, that was a pretty terrifying thing. And uh, so I would say, you know, you have to, and also you have to, you have to, it's, it's a lot of work own your own business. Oh my gosh, the, dude. the risk, and, and you guys know this, but the risk and then the work, I mean, it doesn't just happen. Yeah. And a lot of people think that, hey, I'm just going to start a business and, you know, roll out of bed and here it comes. Yeah. And I would say most insurance agents, um, you know, being an insurance agent or any sales, I, let, let's just actually expand that out to sales. Salesmen think, uh, a lot of people get into sales, they're like, hey, I can just show up and people are just going to walk in the door and <laughs> I'm going to sell them and I'm going to make all this money. And it's like, that's just that's not real. Yeah. Uh, well, let's talk about that then. Let's unpack that. So you seem to have found a way to go knock down business. Obviously, if you're growing 250 percent and you're doing six million premium inside your first year, from being worried at Christmas from to being a worried. year later, six million yeah. group health insurance. So let's talk about yeah. that. Like, awesome. let's talk about you know. Obviously, you don't have to divulge any secrets, but what is or or do or yeah, oh, right, yeah, right, right, or just yeah. give us everything. Yeah. Um. What what is uh? What would you attribute that success to? What What do you have to do day to day? What is it? Mindset focused in addition to, here's the things I got to knock down today, or what do you attribute that prospecting success to? So um, I, I I'd have a couple of things that I, I would say on that. Uh, one is I built a really good reputation. Mm. Um. I I probably received um 14 referrals group health referrals wow. uh, in the month of October. Um, I'm not sure how many uh, we're mm. at right now in the month of November, um, but I get a lot of referrals. And the reason I get a lot of referrals is because I know what I'm doing. I'm extremely honest. I walk away from business whenever it's not the best for the client. Yeah. And people know that. Um, and you know, I, I, uh, I, I can't remember where that came from, but there was a, uh, a uh, quote somewhere that if you want to people to see you as being trustworthy, the um, secret is to be trustworthy. Yeah. Uh, if you Weird are trustworthy, people are yeah. going to automatically just, hey, you seem kind of like a trustworthy guy, you know? Um, and so uh, a reputation, I would say, is my number one thing that I can, um, that I can go and say that, hey, this, is, this was uh, the biggest part of uh, me being able to get what success I have uh, I've been able to. Um, on top of that, I was very, very um, intentional with everything I did. Um, yeah. I had a very clear uh, thought out, this is what I'm going to do, this I'm going to prospect. Um, law of reaping and sowing, I'm going to go ahead and tell you it's about a 60 day, whatever yeah. you yeah. sow, yeah. about 60 days later, that's when it all starts popping up and that's that's when you can reap it. And one, you've got to sow it, and two, you've got to stick it out and be there to reap it. Mm -hmm. um, and I've, I've watched, um, I've actually trained a lot of uh, insurance agents. Um, I had some that I trained that did uh, individual or Medicare, and then group is obviously the number one thing that I've trained on. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the thing that I notice the most often is the, uh, you know, getting through that, I mean, we have a very long, especially in group, it is a very long sales, sales cycle. cycle. Yeah. I mean, before that first commission check comes in, uh, you need to know what you're getting into, but then you got to be patient and you got to put in the effort. Most people within two weeks, they, they're they done. And honestly, it's, it's they ought to move on um, because they do two weeks and they're like, well, I did all this work and nothing's and, come yeah. from it. Yeah. Um, I, had a, I actually had a, a guy that uh, worked for me this summer he put in a lot of really good effort. Um, you know, uh, I coached him up, um, and he left. And since then, some of the they're coming to you sewing that he's done. Yeah. I'm riding him, yeah. and you know, we have multiple. Uh, uh, I I want to say that two this month that he went wow. and sewed in June 
I'm reaping now, and I, I you know, and it's one of those things. If he could have stayed, he would have gotten that. Yeah. Um, but he uh, he was so focused on the short term, and it's like you know, hey, I'm, I, I, you know, this is not a, a short term cycle. It, it yeah, does yeah. it does take time. Now, mind you, what's what's awesome about what we do is you know, once you get a client, I mean, they just don't go anywhere. You yeah. know, that's what I love about insurance is uh, that residual income. Uh, right. You take care of them. It just sits there, and every month, and I, I don't track, uh, I don't watch my commissions as closely as I really should. I'm, I'm positive I, I probably lose out because I don't look at that. Most independent agencies don't. <laughs> yeah, and I'm, I'm so bad at that, and I, I, you know, eventually that's something I've got to. That, that's one of the big. What do you things. mean, like the carrier doesn't pay it, and you have to, yeah. you have to raise your hand? We hope they do. But sometimes it doesn't happen. And we hope it's the right amount on uh, the right time. But really? a lot of times they don't. That's annoying. Uh, I didn't realize. I didn't even think about that as a factor. I mean, yeah. it's someone's got to you know in, input the data. That's and hope true. Right. It comes out. You know. Well, and, and you know, I usually catch it because maybe it's like a uh, twenty dollar a head comp, and then all of a sudden I'm getting a check, and it's seven hundred and sixty three dollars, and it's like you know, I'm not great at math, but twenty dollars <laughs> times however many people will never come out with a three at the end, yeah, you know, yeah, uh, yeah, and change. Yeah, yeah. And Good it's like, catch. yeah, that's that's just not going to happen. Someone's wrong. And maybe it's in my favor, <laughs> maybe it's not. But somebody's wrong here. And that, well, that actually happens a lot. So you talk about, I know you're a big networker, but whenever you, you know, started on your own deal, you get referrals. You can't necessarily control the referrals. That's just about reputation and really building true. that. So what do you do to go out and hustle? Like, what does that look like? It, I, as far as the referrals, I will go ahead and tell you that I get a lot of referrals because I ask for them. Yeah. Um, I make sure that I earn the referral, and then I it doesn't bother me to look at somebody and say, hey, um, I just saved you 30% on your group benefits. You've got to know somebody that, that, know. You, that you want to do a favor for and send me into them. Um, and I usually couch it as, you're doing them a favor by sending me. You know that. Yeah. I just saved you 30%. You're welcome. Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, uh, so, and I, and a lot of people will write them. I've had people that, while I'm talking to them, they'll pick text up the them. phone and call or text and say, hey, I've got a guy. Hey, I told him that you're going to be calling him. Cool. Um, wow. And, you know, and that's, it, it works. And again, it, it was earned on the front end. So, yeah. it wasn't a big thing on the, on the back end. So, uh, other than that, um, networking. Do you go to events? Are you part of you know some stuff? I mean, you so I've I've tried a lot of different things. I went to a lot of like chamber of commerce um, yeah. events. Uh, you know, the big thing that you got to do is you have to get around your uh, okay. You're we're fishing. Mm -hmm. We've got to make sure that you know we're fishing in the right pond, and we know what we're trying to. And then you bait for that fish. You know. Yeah. So uh, for me, I'm looking for owners of businesses, CFOs, um, and then HRs. Mm -hmm. um, I've been a guest speaker at a couple of CFO uh, different events. Nice. Um, that helps a lot. You sit there, you educate them. They, they're like, oh, wow, okay, you know what you're doing. Really easy to get a phone call afterwards from somebody saying, hey, you spoke at this event. Same thing, uh, SHRM. Um, I've actually uh, uh, been a guest speaker at some SHRM events. What's SHRM? Um, oh, man. It's uh, the Society of Human Resource Managers. Oh, okay. I'm pretty so like sure. an HR yes. powwow? It's it. the, uh, it, it's the uh, HR. You talk about TPS reports all day? <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, uh, but anyway, so, and you know, go, go in, talk about uh, employee benefits, um, so on and so forth. And then uh, the other thing I do is uh, something, it's actually a pretty new technique. You guys have probably never heard of this before. All right. Um, if you're ready, okay, here I'm it is. Ready. So I do this thing. Um, I figure most businesses have a phone and a phone number. Weird. I have a phone and a phone number, and I pick up my phone, and I call into these businesses' phones and phone numbers, wow. and I'm like, and I, it's and usually, works? well, Wait you know, it's minute. usually, Sometimes? it's usually Is this cold. black magic that you speak it's, of? Uh, it's usually pretty cold <laughs> when I'm calling, um, but, you know, I call in, and they, uh, uh, you know, I, that is going to be new to a lot of insurance. <laughs> right, right, right. right. <laughs> so, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, I do a lot of I do a lot of cold calling, and I, I'll call in, Good. and uh, you know, I there's numbers uh, about a three percent you will get a meeting, and of that, of those meetings, I usually write about half. Wow. So if I make a hundred dials and I get a hold of somebody, so a hundred times I get a hold of somebody, I'm pretty much guaranteed one client. And if you look at the hours you put into that, it's a no-brainer. Oh, mean, yeah. It's like a, you know, absolutely. I do that all the time. Now, mind you, I hate cold calling. 
<laughs> so you nobody know, loves it. Uh, yeah, I don't think anybody does. No. That. Yeah, it, there's somebody out there. I just know there's a sick there's a sick person out there <laughs> that's like, man, I'm a, you're I'm probably a, right. I'm a cold call today, and it's like, uh, you dirty. But you know, um, uh, cold calling is is something else uh, that I've uh, uh, you know done quite a bit on. Um, and of course, you know, again, cold call. Now here's a new client, new referral source. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and you know, and it, it takes off from there. And I've had, I actually have had, uh, you know, and again, just hitting the referral one more time. And that is, uh, I like to say that, you know, whenever I started off, I was a spider, or excuse me, a scorpion. I'd go mm. around hunting constantly. Um, now I'm more of a spider. I build a web and things come into it. And I mean, I just, you know, if you, if you have a well-built web, uh, stuff flies, you want to make it as pretty as you can. Um, but I've, I've actually had somebody call me and they said, okay, hey, look, I've had, I've had three people giving yeah. me your number that, and said oh, that I need to call you. Gotcha. So I'm calling awesome. you. I have no intention of, of using you, but after the third person, I've decided I need to at least, so I need to at least talk to you. shopping and then they're yeah. going to use you. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I will say that, yes, that person ended up using me. You, yeah. know? <laughs> yeah. you um, let the wolf in the chicken coop. Right. Right. Uh, so Though you're adding value. Not stealing chicken, that's not what I meant. Yeah, yeah, well, and I mean, and again, at the end of the day, the reason he used me is because he felt like his current agent was taking really good care of him, and they weren't. Um, mm. And that's, you know, and that's Explain a... Explain that. Well, okay, uh, most agents, which, and, and hitting back on what you said earlier, most, at least within the group space, and mm -hmm. I, I think that's pretty true across the board. I don't even board. know that many group health agents in Springfield, Missouri, by the way. I, I'm guessing there's out there, but... There, there's quite a few. It's a good niche, though. Uh, but there are, most of them are in their mid-40s. They're young yeah. at mid-40s, or they're in their mid-50s, 60s. Okay. And that is, that's kind of the norm. And what, uh, what, what I run into a lot is um, a lot of the... Uh, Agents are very complacent and comfortable. Mm. They're they're not staying up with some of the trends within the market. They're not willing to show uh, every option. Um, we recently had a, uh, a a group agent, which he's actually um, he's a younger agent. He's forty um, within the space. He uh, uh, I have a client we quoted um, ended up showing a twenty percent savings. And the only reason we ended up quoting. This particular client is kind of a uh, a political. They felt obligated to uh, quote with us. It wasn't even because it was a hey we're shopping, yeah. and they said there's no possible <coughs> way you can beat what my current agent has. My current agent is awesome. They're wonderful. By the time we got done, the uh, current agent tells them, you know, I don't know how they're getting the rates that they're getting. Yeah. Um, but you know, and then they came back and it was like, well, he's showing you a tier two plan. And I'm showing you a tier one plan, which I always thought tiers increased, you know? So yeah. it's like, so you're saying down. my plan was better? Because it was a better plan. What I'm showing is a better <laughs> plan. And the thing is, he hadn't once quoted this group out in like five or six years. Oh, got it. So the creep just kind of killed him. Yeah. And that's, yeah. Uh, and that's, that's normal. Um, yeah. I got to say that, you know, my experience, most agents... Uh, and most employers don't have an agent that's actually looking out for the best interest. So it's a, a wonderful, um, yeah, it provides an excellent opportunity. So. Well, what do you say to those new insurance agents um, that, you know, you obviously said plant, reap what you sow, plan for the future, but what, what do you feel like are some pitfalls that newer insurance agents in your space that you've seen fall into in a, in a larger group and said, you know what, I can spot that guy that isn't going to succeed because of this, this, and this, besides work ethic and the basic stuff. I mean, yeah, work ethic is the easiest one. One dude gave up too soon. Yeah. I mean, you know, the, giving up too soon is definitely an easy pitfall. Um, you need to give it a year. I mean, you don't know. Mm. You, well, you'll know if you succeeded, uh, yeah. you know, uh, uh, if you succeed early. But you need an entire year in group space before you can actually say, hey, this is going to work out. It's not going to work out. Because um, I've got another guy that started June 1st, didn't do very well. Um, I think he's going to be pushing, I, I hope that he's going to be pushing sixty to 70000 um, as far as revenue oh, goes yeah, and, and, and not too long. And, that, that's, and again, he was feeling it. Yeah. But whenever he started, he said, I'm going to give this a year and let's wow. see what happens. Good for and him. I got to say, within two months, I think he was ready. What, what kind <laughs> of person do you look for whenever you're hiring a group health? You know, like, for instance, I know group health isn't everybody. You should probably get interviews you don't hire. So what is it that you look for? Uh, confidence. Okay. Uh, number one thing that, you know, you can sell is confidence. Mm. And obviously, f 
false bravado is not the same as confidence. I but, agree. Uh, you know, it's still, uh, you, you have somebody that's confident, that can stand, you know, have a conversation, get in front of people and talk. Yep. Um, you don't have to be that intelligent. You just have to be able to, you just need to know 10% more than the people you're in the room with and you're a qualified expert. There you go. You know? Um, and I wish I had the knowledge bomb button, man. Bradley. I know. <laughs> I know. That's what I've been thinking about. <laughs> but uh, uh, that's a uh, uh, definitely um, confidence is what I look for. And it's uh, losing confidence in yourself is probably the number one pitfall mm-hmm. that, uh, that you know an agent will, will run into. And I, like I said, I mean, I've watched this over and over and over and they start thinking that you know I can't do this blah 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 and uh, you know that's uh, you know I, I love that um, demotivational poster that says you know uh, you know you're gonna miss 100% of the uh, shots you never take yeah. um, and statistically speaking about 98% of the ones you do um, you know, that's, yeah, yeah. And, no, uh, seriously yeah 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 Swing and, and, uh, miss, and there, there's actually yeah while it's a uh, demotivating in one way it's like it's kind of true you only need that 2% though yeah. um, you know to just make sure that that hundred percent of the pie is big enough well if anybody so knows it, it's it. this guy right here exactly. we're just you know throwing a seven-figure retreat in July you know if you would have if you would have looked back two and a half years ago was it two years ago that you had the initial idea for 8% nation um, it was almost a year and a half G- yeah May of 18 was when I first if, released it in your head do you, do you think you're gonna have a seven-figure budget for and Jordan Belfort at the Palms in Vegas in no, two years no I did not why not were you not thinking big enough you know what I mean I like, wasn't you know I yeah. wasn't I to think it, we all think we're thinking big enough but then we look back like you said yeah. earlier and we're like Three years ago, I thought I was thinking big, you know, and even, even last year, I thought I was thinking big. And yeah. now, like, right now, compared to last year, just what I know and thinking bigger, right, and what you're seeing a year ago till right. now, we all go through that. Well, and what I'm, what I'm struck too, James, is it, it sounds to me, and you, you didn't say this, but I'm reading between the lines. You took, you, okay, so let's just say you wanted to be in control of your destiny instead of waiting for somebody to retire. Yeah. The easier road would have been, this is your father-in-law, not a random dude that you're working for. The easier road would have been to chill and inherit the book. Yep. Because it's his Com- daughter. Complacent like the other agents that you're stealing it's, clients from. It's right. his daughter and his son-in-law. You're getting the book. So you chose. It'd be awkward at Thanksgiving if we didn't. You know. My but, point uh, is, yeah, though, yeah. is you chose to say, you know what? I ain't waiting for no dang book to get handed to me. I'm going to go after it. And that is, inc- I mean, to me, that. I respect that. That's a big I deal. I respect that. Most people would, would just take low-hanging fruit, sit well, around. like. But, but you know what? I don't want people giving me free stuff. No either, doubt. Honestly. Oh, you didn't earn it, and it's not yours. Yeah, that was a uh, yeah. That, that. that was that was a big part of my thing. It was you know I want to I want to own it. Then it's mine. You can never say that you know. Well, hey, look, uh, he got you know blah blah blah. Exactly. And and mind you, uh, yeah, that was a big. Uh, I got a lot of training and a lot of knowledge and stuff. And so very thankful for uh, the opportunity and everything Absolutely. I learned while I worked yeah. for uh, yeah, yeah. my father-in-law. But. Yeah, it, you know, uh, hanging out in somebody else's shadow, you'll, you know, uh, never. Well, make and how easy could it have yeah. been to? I mean, because I, you know, we, we've been friends. You know, we, we we hung out weekly there for years, and I remember, you know, your kids were going through some some serious issues there for a minute, yeah. where you could have very nobly taken the guaranteed money and not and and, and easily justified that because of your family and mm-hmm. all that but instead you just shouldered that burden and just sprinted and and i respect that man so i salute you to that because dude i bet you one out of ten people make that jump i mean how many people get their dad's business or get their mom's business or whatever so yep. um I, that's awesome man just to reiterate that because you could have easily it was not just about being lazy it's more about you could have justified that completely and nobody would have complained you know nobody would have said anything so that's why i was wondering earlier in the podcast like where that came from because um i see a lot of similarities and you and I, when mm-hmm. you talk, just history, story, not wanting anything handed to you, wanting to go out and earn it. Um, and I, I always kind of wonder myself, you know, where that comes from from people. Because some people just want to create something on their own and will do, will do whatever the freak it takes to create it. Right. Uh, but most people aren't that way. So, you know, uh, I've had that. And then there's a particular kind of employee who has an employer mindset that I'm like, how can I cultivate this? Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's a, yeah, I, I don't have a good, uh, I, I, I feel like that that was something that from the time I was young, I was always, of course, like whenever I was young, I don't know what you always said that you wanted to be, you know, you had your astronauts and yeah, Spider-Man. Yeah. It wasn't insurance. And, no, uh, no, no, definitely yeah. not insurance, you know. Uh, who, uh, Basketball uh, yeah, player. Right, so I was, uh, I actually always wanted to take over the world. 
So, you know, I, I decided to sell for a family and, you know, entrepreneurial, uh, you know, insurance stuff. But yeah, uh, so I would say probably, I just feel like it had to have been a, a personality type, um, yeah. at least for in my case. I don't, I don't know about everybody else, but that was my thing. And I, you know, I'd actually have a lot of people from uh, middle school that I've carved out uh, sections of different continents that I owe them. Someday, if I do, uh, you know, uh, they gave me, you know, a, a Twinkie at school, and I was like, "Hey, check it out! I'll give you Argentina." You know, I don't exactly know where that is, but I know it's a country. Give me that food, and I will give you that. You I know, like that, it, man. No, you got yeah, to yeah, pay your debts, man. Right, right. You know. Uh, but, well, um, do you have any other, you know, sort of wisdom or, or parting wisdom? So, the Eight Percent Nation podcast, you know, eight percent of insurance agents succeed. Does that number shock you? The first three years. Average age is 59 and a half, like you mentioned earlier, too, by the way. It's 59 and a half? Okay. That's the average yeah, age wow. of an insurance agent. So uh, that's even higher than what I thought. Um, as far as 8% succeeding, I, I'll be honest, I actually am. I'm always surprised. Yeah. And the reason I'm always surprised is because why? I mean, it's, yeah. uh, in my opinion, it's a lot. I mean, it's not that it's, it, it, okay, yeah, it's hard. Um, but it, it's not that hard to succeed. Uh, I bet for group health the stati- and life and et cetera, the statistics probably worse. This is all of insurance, and I think it's a right. little easier to succeed in home and auto. I just do. Uh, and I, I would agree, just from my own experience of, of you know a lot of friends within the industry, home and auto does tend um, to have people both get in and stay in longer. And I, I honestly I don't understand because um, I feel like it's a very simple formula. Uh, that if you go and you, you put in that formula of you know the effort being intentional, you build up that confidence. The way you build up the confidence is you go to meetings, you get a bloody nose, um, and then you learn your you learn your craft. I mean, try to master that craft, mm-hmm. and after that, I mean, you all of a sudden look back uh, just in the process of trying to do those things. You all of a sudden look back and you're like, oh whoa, I made it. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, and I, I I don't I've never met anybody who uh, at least that you know we hired um, at some point that I didn't look at and say, yeah, you're going to make it. Mm-hmm. And afterwards, I've always kind of shook my head on the why, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, just, uh, I just, it just weird to me that they, that they didn't. But, you know, I would um, be intrigued to see your DISC assessment or your predictive index, uh, just because I think your predictive index style would come back at uh, either a captain or uh, a voyager. Yeah, okay, yeah, I, haven't, I haven't taken, uh, I wasn't sure what you meant uh, whenever you said yeah, the disc assessment. personality test, gotcha. but, but it tells you a lot about, we do them before we hire salespeople here. Yeah. Because we have about 10 salespeople, and we're hiring them nonstop, and I just had someone last, a couple weeks ago, take it, and they're, a, they're an S or a C, which means they should be doing service or, or you know, data or computer stuff um, instead of sales, and so we didn't hire them for sales. Yeah. But, yeah, but sort of like D is, uh, you know, their drive, they're, they're ambitious, they're, you know, aggressive. Um, I, they're influential, they're social, they're great with people, they're a people person. Um, I think if you took it, you'd probably be a high D, high I, if I had to guess, which is what I am. I know I did the uh, uh, Ingram, uh, in, in, Enneagram. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what that one is. There's anyway. several. Yeah, there, there, was, there was one that I, I got, and I looked, and it was, a, it was a one and an eight or something like that. And I was like, "Oh no, better not show anybody these. These are <laughs> these are bad." You know, uh, while it was like, you know, you you may be uh, successful, but you're going to be really hard to live with. Don't talk to my wife. <laughs> and uh, you know, uh, and you can be, you know, overly aggressive uh, exactly. when dealing with people. I was like, "Ooh, exactly." <laughs> you know, exactly. <laughs> no, I, I think most people would. They would see the numbers. They'd be a little freaked out. Right. But naturally. I think that's one of the biggest reasons why you've been successful. I think it's, dude, I think it's a blessing. Most people would think of it as a curse. Uh, yeah, it's a why blessing. not? Yeah, I, I, I think it definitely is. Um, uh, uh, as far as, you know, it being a blessing, I mean, that's, that is something that definitely is some of that. I've never understood why some people make the choices and everything else that they do. But at the same time, yes, I'm very thankful. Uh, for example, the, I have a really high uh, risk tolerance. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's something I feel like you just kind of inherit that. Um, and I am so thankful for that because uh, I'm definitely a lot better off today than I was two years ago. And I got to yeah. tell you, two years ago, I was pretty happy, yeah. super yeah, yeah, content, yeah, yeah. Uh, already extremely successful. But you, uh, you get bored easy, don't you? I do. Yeah, yeah. That's a uh, always needs to be some new new endeavor um, new constantly. It's man. it's important, you know. If you have a yeah, you have a, if you have nothing that you're uh, uh, shooting for, you know. So you know that's why. Uh, as far as, you know, my two sons, it's all about, you know, 
hey, um, one of you guys needs to be a pastor so I can say I did my part. <laughs> and the other one, we're still going to go for the whole take over the world thing, you know. Yes. So, uh, but anyway. Right on. Well, I, I'm glad you came, man. I wanted to introduce you to, I knew yes. you'd have a kindred spirit among entrepreneurs. I remember you came to me uh, before you were going to make the jump. And you're like, man, what yeah. do you think? Yeah. And I'm like, dude, go for it, bro. Like, you've got to make, you're confident, you can do it. Who cares what the, you know, you're like, yeah, but I, it may take, you know, and I'm like, just go for it. And here we are a year later, less than that. Well, wait, was it a year and a half? I'm blanking out. How long ago? Well, yeah, let's see. That would have been. It's grown fast. Oh, a year and a half. Yeah. It would have been about yeah. a year and a half ago. Yeah. yeah. That I was like, hey, I'm kind of thinking about doing this. So here you are with six million of your own business. Yeah. And don't have to wait for nobody's book to hand it to you. So right. So kudos to you, man. So. Yeah. Thank you. Dude, thank you for being on. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It. Absolutely. It was a, a, really, really good. I really yeah, think really, so too. Really good. Yeah. No matter what type of insurance you guys are in, I think you can learn from the entrepreneurial jump that James took, along with the confidence and just the general nuggets that I feel like he dropped on yeah. us today. So thank you guys for joining us. We'll see you on the next one. 